Hey guys, what's going on? This is your boy, Mr. Abel, Chase Abel. I keep doing that. I keep saying, yo, I, I think I should be a disc jockey. I think I came from that era where everyone's like, hey, what's up, man? This is DJ Chasey Chase. Brought, brought to you by... Ugh. Brought to you... So brought to you by Slow, slow, slow Glow. <laughs> Jesus, Chase. One day, you're going to really just make a smooth introduction. You know, anyways, guys, back to the original uh, thing I'm trying to say. Thank you guys for tuning in to Cut to the Chase podcast. I am your boy, Mr. Chase Abel. Thank you guys for tuning in. Always hit that subscribe button on YouTube. We do have Cut to the Chase. And by the way, guys, if you don't know, it's the number two. Cut to the Chase, the number two. And we're all uh, we're on all platforms. Go ahead. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You know what to do. Go ahead and do it. Um, We're going to have a really, really fun episode today. Uh, Me and Nikki Neighborhoods, um, we uh, have been kind of hanging a little bit. And uh, we've been been experiencing the public uh, at face value. Uh, uh, We have a lot of uh, testimony to tell you guys this this episode. So hopefully you guys are ready for that. I'm going to just go right into it. Um, I think I'm just going to give my two weeks and call all my uh, employees that I work with the C word because I'm just really <laughs> yeah, just okay, guys. I'm, this is the thing. You probably I'm just gonna just fill you in on something so you guys prepare yourself. As long as I have a corporate job, and as long as you guys don't subscribe to my podcast and don't make me bigger, I will complain each and every week about my fucking job. Not about the job itself, about the people in it, okay? For example, I don't know about you guys. Most of you guys have jobs. I hope you do because don't ever ask me to borrow money because it's not happening. (laughs) Most of you guys have jobs. You have a boss or bosses. Sometimes we have people in the job that think that they're bosses. Oh, yeah. You know those people. They tell you what to do. They insinuate what you should do. You know, they're always having lunch with the with their boss and the executives. You know, those people. Ugh, ugh. Brown nose and brown sugar nose, whatever the fuck you call it. Right. Um, for a second, for a second, I equated brown sugar to the movie <laughs> and the brown nose. And so interesting. Anyways, back to my point. I'm I'm at my job. OK, my job is a pretty. I would say very fast pace. You have to be, you got to be able to multitask. You have to be organized and you have to show up on time. That's the requirements for my job. Now, some of you guys are saying, so how in the world did you get hired, Chase? Because you don't possess any of those traits. Listen, I'm an actor as well, guys. (laughs) I'm an actor as well. So sometimes you got to, you got to fake the pot. A little bit, as they say in Boston, fake the pot. Okay, so I'm at my job. I'm at my desk. I get in at 6.30 in the morning. I work really early. I asked them, which they were nice. They gave me my preference. I said, hey, they said, what would you like for a preference on your shifts? I said, I would prefer to work mornings. You know, I have other things that I do at night. Um, so you could, if you could kind of think about me in the mornings, preferably, I will work a around you know certain evening shifts and p.m. shifts but mainly I like to work in the mornings so I'm working in the morning 6 30 as soon as I punch in it's busy as heck people are asking for so many things you know when you work in hospitality which I do you're dealing with a lot of needy people a lot of really wealthy needy people which is ugh, another thing but it's a good job I get pretty pretty good I'm not complaining in that sense but When I work, I really make sure that I'm really trying to do the best that I can and I don't leave any other work for my other coworkers. I try to leave, I try to try to take accountability and not deflect any of my work to other coworkers. With that being said, I didn't take a bathroom break on this particular shift. Not even a bathroom break. I'm just going, I'm going, I'm trying to get things done, trying to, trying to be, you know, productive. One of my managers comes to me after I take a lunch, right? Now we're supposed to take a half hour lunch. We come back and then we go back to work, right? That's usually generally how much jobs give to you as a half hour break or an hour break. 
I come back from break. Now, listen, guys. Now, I punched in for my break. I punched out for my break. And then, you know, I like to go to the bathroom, wash my hands, you know, like to take an extra few minutes, let's just say. Okay? Now, how much time? We're not going to get into that. Okay? But let's just say I feel like it was in the within respect of my lunch break. It wasn't that much. I would say, let's say, between anywhere from 15 to 18 minutes extra over. Whatever. Okay? We'll get into the data later. Okay? I come back from my break. I haven't took a lunch break. I haven't took, I'm sorry, I haven't even gone to the bathroom all morning. So I, I, I pretty much put everything all into one during my break. I go to the bathroom, make a phone call, do all those things. My, my, one of my managers asked, I was like, hey, can I talk to you in the back for a second? Ugh. Anytime your manager says, hey, can I talk to you in the office for a second? Just, just prepare that they're going to try to shit. They're going to shit on you, right? But they do it nice. They're like, hey, do you mind if I can talk to you? Next time someone tells me, do you mind if I talk to you? I want to say, no. How about that? No. No. And then they look at you like, well, I mean, but you technically have to. But you gave me the option, right? You gave me the option to say no. So, so why, are we having, why are we having this issue? That's another thing I'll talk with about Nikki about. So I, I you know, I guess I accepted the offer, right? <laughs> So I go into the back and then she goes, by the way, I noticed that you punched in, you know, back at like 154, no, 144, but you didn't come back to the desk until two o'clock. And I instinctively said, yeah. And she goes, well, just be mindful of like, you know, you can't go like to the bathroom after your lunch, your half hour break, your half hour break, and then you have to come back as soon as you can. And I... It took every ounce of me to not say I quit at that very moment because I will never, ever allow anyone to micromanage me in the area of my lunch. You're on salary, okay? I never have to tell you or ask you you're going to lunch or what did you do after your lunch? Don't tell me how long it, that I need to come back to after I take a lunch, okay? She didn't even ask me for help. She didn't even ask me how I was doing, right? I get it. You're a new manager. You're trying to search your position. You're trying to, you know, follow the rules, okay? But this is where I have a problem. How in the world... How in the world do you put, do you allow yourself to put yourself in that situation with your employee where the employee is actually training you on the job? <laughs> like I'm literally training you on the job. She doesn't know anything about the job. I'm training her. So you're asking me for help continuously every moment. But then as soon as I leave and I do a little, let's say, boo boo. Or something that doesn't fall uh, along with the rules. You want to just make it seem. You want to micromanage me. You want to come with this passive aggressive attitude. You want to start telling me people what to do. <sighs> okay. This is what we need to do, guys. This is the plan. This is the plan, guys. I probably... This is what you guys need to do. You guys need to subscribe to this podcast right now and tell everyone that you know to subscribe to this podcast so you can get me out of this conundrum okay because i'm swear to god the next time one of these ugh, people tell me like just just rubs me the wrong way you know what maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong maybe it's me maybe it's me but you know what in that moment which is most of the time i don't feel i'm wrong okay so I just want to get that out. You guys think about yourself. Send me a DM. Do you think I'm wrong for being angry? Do you guys think I'm, I'm, I'm a little, do you think I'm just perturbed? Or do you think that this falls in the realm of, basically, was she right? You know what I mean? Was she right? Okay. Um, and we'll, we'll uh, I'm sure we'll recircle back to this at a later time with Nikki. And he'll, he'll I'm sure he'll rip me apart on this shit because Nikki's usually right. And I'm just fucking usually the. Angry black man. So whatever. <sighs> Came in very, very fresh. 
I came in fresh today. Today's my day off. I went to jujitsu ju- today. I did a noon class. Um, I got a sweat in, um, which is good. It gave me a good start to the day. I took a shower for the first time in my own apartment, guys. Yes, your boy is in his place. Basement apartment. I mean, whatever. You know, we'll talk about that. But you know what? In a weird way, I love it. It's kind of one of those places where it's kind of one of those places where you wouldn't necessarily tell your friends that you live there. But once they go inside, you kind of make it very creative. You make it so, like it's a kind of like a warmy place. You make it very you make it nice. You make it cozy. So I love it. I actually love the place. It's a basement apartment. Uh, there's, I have a roommate. His name's John. Uh, he's older. He's much older than me. I don't know exactly how old he is. I want to say, I mean, he's a, I mean, he's a, he's a older white man from the Cape. So I'm thinking maybe he's between the age of 65 and like 97. And I feel like he knows about boats. Like the way he walks, like he's been on like on a deck for, for many. Yeah. Like old boats. That's the vibe I'm getting. Talks a lot, but I like that. Because this is the thing. I don't like people who are young that talk a lot. People that are older that talk a lot, I like that. Because people generally who are older will have more more experience. So some, you're going to get something out of that longevity of like a discussion. Wow. What a word. I need to. I need a, longevity is not a word. All right. All right. Well. I don't know how you expect me to get better with my grammar if you keep knocking me down, Nick. I don't know. I don't. I don't. This is whatever. Um, I'm African. I mean, I, <laughs> this guy over here. So, anyways, right? Spend a night in my apartment. It was good. I don't have a. I have a mattress. Don't have the frame yet, but hopefully, I'm gonna get that together. I'm gonna do deep cleaning on the whole apartment tomorrow. Make you know, make it. Just a little nice enough for me to kind of go in there, take a uh, sleep, do my writing. Because I'm usually, listen, man, I'm really in my place ever. When you're a comedian and you're working and you're trying to get shit done, uh, you're really at home. Unless the job, unless you have a job you work remotely, that's different. But I don't have that job. Everything I do is outside. My whole life since I was a kid, I just like being outside. I hate being inside the house. Um but there's times where I feel like you do need to be at the home. You have to stay home. You can't be out all the time. But I'm always constantly grinding, man. This grinding type of life, which in a weird way I love. And it's just kind of the thing. It's just one of those things I just adopted. And I just don't feel like it's anything. I don't think I, I don't feel it weird about it. So uh, I, gr- I bought a great DKNY comforter from Marshalls. Oof. I asked my friend, I was like, hey, should I go to Target? Should I go to like Macy's? She's like, no, just go to Marshall's. Marshall's has some good comforters. Good, you know, they don't have pillows though. The pillow game needs to be up. They have those cheap pillows. I mean, I had to buy a couple because I had to put my head on it on something. But I'm going with, when I get my paycheck, I'm going with um, a Casper mattress with Casper pillows. Nikki Neighbors, I feel like, has like a little bit more knowledge in this area. I'm going to probably um, defer to him to kind of give me some pointers. But um, what I came to the realization with my life, guys, and I hope you guys do the same, is that I feel like there's two things that you really, really have to spend money on to get the best out of what you're buying. One is your health, things that, that has to do with your health. Buy, you know, you know, working out, buying supplements, nutrition, you know, healthy food, things like that. Well, well, um, health and wellness stuff and <clears throat> your bed, your mattress, because you think about it, right? One of my friends who told me about the mattress game, because people like to buy cheap mattresses and I was one of those people, right? And I won't be anymore. And the reason why is this, think about this guys. How, if you think about it, how many times do people buy a car brand new throughout their lifetime? Three or four, let's just say three or four cars in their whole lifetime, brand new. Let's just give a nice fair amount, $20,000 for each car. That's 60 grand, right? For three cars. Why in the world you wouldn't buy a $2,000 mattress, $2,500 mattress that can last you 10 years? And I put that and I finally clicked. I'm like, why am I not buying one of the, you know, a better mattress for my overall health to make me feel better and so I can get a good night's sleep? 
So it put me in that mode. So I'm going to do that. Now, I don't have the money for it. Which leads to my next point. A GoFundMe page will be up on my podcast, uh, on my Instagram after this episode. So there's a lot of things we got to talk about. Um, me and Nikki, um, you know, whoa, we got a lot to talk about. So I'm not going to wait. Um, so let me bring my boy in. He allowed me to wash my jujitsu gear in his apartment. That's a good friend. This is the thing. It's when I, when you I text Nikki. I was like, "Hey, Nikki, I'm go, I'm coming over. Do you happen to have? Not even say that. I was like, "Do you mind if I wash my jujitsu gear? Because I didn't have time to wash it. Because I went to an early class, and then I'm going to another class at six thirty. Would I be able to wash it?" He goes, "Yeah, absolutely, man. Let me double check. But let me check with the wifey because that's what we got to do as men. We got to make sure the wifey's good. You don't want to bring friend shit over without telling the wife. That's not a good thing to do, guys. If you're married, you got a wifey." Just don't ex- think that your wife's going to accept your friend's shit. That's what I learned. So Nikki checked with the wifey. She said it was good. Gave him the pass. Gave Nikki. By the way, I showed up to the podcast on time, Nikki. So let's start there. Last episode, you kind of, you ran me for, you, you know, you gave it to me a little bit. What did you think? Um, okay, well, it's good to be here. It's a lot. That was a lot to digest. Sorry, Nikki. I think first of all, I'm coming hot. First of all, yeah, thanks for showing up on time. You're welcome. That was great. You're welcome. Um, it's my job. Yeah, we're doing laundry. I I don't know uh, how quickly your, that ghee will dry, but we'll 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 find out. <laughs> we'll certainly find out. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> Well, well, you have you have a lot going this. on. You have your you have your job. Yeah. You have your apartment, which yes. is good to hear that you're in your apartment. Thank you. Um, I don't think that you, it makes sense for you at this time to buy a twenty five hundred dollar mattress. I don't even have a twenty five hundred dollar mattress, so I'm I going can't. To Casper, I can't. Yeah, okay, because I I can't add the only the only reason I said it that way is because like I can't advocate for that because I I don't know sure. the 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 mattress game that well. Um, never, never, well, you should lay in it though. Do not buy it unless you lay in it. That's the that's my only tip there. So so uh, you know, yeah. look, you're making you're making some really big strides. I'm making strides. Right? Being on time to things. Yes. Um, Thank not you. blowing up and leaving your job over you know what, what to me seems like a minor infraction. Okay. Seems like a minor infraction, you know. Right. Uh, and something you can kind of just brush off. I gotta yeah. I feel like I feel that way as well. Yeah, yeah, sure thing. It's a minor infraction. You know what? Even though in minor infractions, you know what bothers me is the way people come. Like the way, I but don't, like, uh, but see, I see. I disagree. I I just don't think you like to be told what to do. Never. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna have to no, get over I that do, at no, some I point. Do, I do. No. Trust me. Whole my whole life, I've been told what to do. I have two African fucking refugee parents. Well, that's number yeah, one. Okay. Number two, I've been told what to do by coaching. I've been an athlete all my life. I know how to listen to directions. You know what I mean? That's actually one of the greatest skills I have is actually listen to directions. I don't like the way it's being presented. How you present it to me, that's where I have a problem. If it's not coming from a genuine place, don't fucking tell me what to do. That's what I'm saying. But but I think I think what's tough to accept when you're in a corporate job is it's never coming from a genuine place. It's it's coming from a we're giving you money, you're taking the money, you have to do what we say. That that's it, which yeah. is t- which is tough. Which yeah, is on a bad tough. day when it's you're tough. tired, you it's took tough. the fucking yeah. train here. You got you know fucking a homeless guy, you know, jerked off on you on the train. Like yeah. it's not what you want to hear. But I'm glad you didn't quit. Didn't quit. Mainly reason why I didn't quit. I started computing how much money I was losing. Correct. If I started walking away, yeah. And I was like, well, I'm not going to let this woman like not stop me. Right. <sighs> Sometimes you gotta, you know, you gotta win the. What do they say? You gotta lose the. The battle to win the war, mm. you know, it is what it is. Um, we in went that to moment though. I did. I was just like bef- before I quit. I was like in that moment, you know, when like Kramer w- w- like did that thing with La- like at the Laugh Factory when he said the N word. Oh stage, yeah, that unfortunate. Chappelle. Yeah, it was a little fortunate, just a little. Um, and when Dave Chappelle did that set, that kind of you know, did he follow was, up it, on that? What was it? Did he did Chappelle follow up on that? Yeah, he followed up on it. He did like a set at the Laugh Factory uh-huh. not too long after that, and he was kind of making fun of the situation. Yeah. And then he was saying, you know, you know, I, I'm part comic and I'm also part human, you know. So the human part was like, God damn, Kramer, you know, damn, why'd you why'd say you that? Why'd you do that to us? You know, but the comical part was like, 
Don't let him break you, Kramer. Don't let him break you. Don't. <laughs> don't, don't apologize. So that's what I was. It's part that. of you wanted to be like, don't, Michael Richards, do not apologize. You said what you said. Yeah. Now stand on it. That's what I was, that, in that moment, I was like, <laughs> don't, let, don't let them break you, Kramer. Do not let them break you. <laughs> From saying the screaming the N word at a bunch of white people, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah which was, doesn't make it okay. It was a mix back. It was a mix people. Um, so I didn't quit. I just and then I actually had a conversation with my director actually fo- right after that about kind of something that was not. I, I had a conversation with my director that had nothing to do with that particular situation because that manager didn't tell my director. She kind of kept it between us. Oh, Listen, okay. She, she's You nice. were having a bad day. I, you had a bad day. You looked at the monolith that was, uh, you know, the, the place that you were, the corporation the, in, in America. In that microsecond, all of that went through your brain and you're like, you know what? I'm fucking sick of this bullshit. I am. Take a deep breath. I did. Get some filtered water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And then just well, I tried, you know. and they try to reprimand me for that. But the best, the, the funny thing about you is, is like okay. you know what the rules are, and I just see it in your head where it's like the moment a rule is put down, I could. I, you've never done this with me, but I could just see in your personality the moment a rule is said, where it's like, hey, you know, you can't go into that closet over there. The first thing you're going to want to do is go into that closet. I'm a comic, and see what and see what's there. I'm a comic. Anytime you tell a comic. Fucking not to do something. We look at we look at it like, well, why? Why not? Well, I'm just well, glad why? you didn't quit. Yeah, well, I know, I know. I don't know why I just said it. Like, I don't know why. Like the reason that's not even a good like reason. But I no, think, but I just it was a weak. It was a it was a it was a fine premise. It was a fine but there was pre- no punchline. There was no punchline. So it's it. like okay, so she just told you to go to just don't go to the bathroom for eighteen I, minutes. Y- yes. It could have been like, you know, her stupid fucking face and that mole that she has on her face. It was more of like the, you know what it was? I, I, I respect the rule. It was more, it's weird. And maybe I can explain it in this way so you can understand it. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a big, I'm big on presentation. The way things are delivered. I'm big on how things are so let's, so, brought so, to people. Okay. So I want to back up because you were a little vague at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So you... Took a lunch break. It was an hour. Mm, it was about forty-seven minutes. Okay, so from so from noon, mm-hmm. from twelve p.m. to twelve forty-seven, mm-hmm. and at twelve forty-seven, you punch back in. No, what happened was I punched out at one fourteen. Punched okay. back in at one forty-four. Exactly thirty minutes. Okay, boom, and then I didn't get back to the desk till two. Okay, yeah. So yes, yeah, so, see, you can't do that. You know yeah, what, you Mickey? Can't do fuck that. you, dude. <laughs> Yeah, you like, can't. Listen, yeah, you can't do. This is why I'm having a problem. But you were, but you were in on premises. Yes, I didn't leave the property. Okay, I didn't leave the property. I, I just listen. I went to take. Just do you really want to know why I took that long? You took a shit. I took a fucking number two. Yeah, but then you, but you do that. You so see. This here, is what I'm saying. Here's the gray line. Here's no, no, the gray area, though. No, I'm not going to let you know. You just say it because I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Well, there you I don't go. give a fuck about the gray line. About this is why I think about corporate America. They try to put you in a fucking. They try to control you. Like, listen, what I'm saying is, is this: if first of all, by the way, I am legally entitled. See, this is where. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. I am legally entitled. 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 Two fifteen minute breaks. Yeah. yeah. Under but they wouldn't law. be 15 minutes with you. They would be, it would, two 15 minute breaks equals a half an hour. You would stretch it into 45 minutes. Well, listen, I'm looking out for them. <laughs> this is my head thinks. I'm looking out for them. I didn't take my 15 minute yet or any of the 13 minute, 15 minute one. I just kind of incorporate it during my lunch break and I still didn't take another 15 minutes away from the desk. Clearly, clearly this is not the long term environment for you. Clearly, that, that that's not it. Let's just settle on that. Because, look, in a company, people that have to deal with the client or people that are client-facing, they don't... The rules that someone in administrative... Like, say you worked at... Um, say you worked at the TD Garden. Sure. This is a good example. Say you worked at the TD Garden, right? And your job was to make sure that the box seat people, the people that have the box seats... They're all taken care of. Your your guest relations at the TD Garden. You don't 
and and say I work at the I work for the Boston Celtics, and I work in you know the administrative marketing or whatever. My schedule is much looser than your schedule because you're in front of people. Does that make sense? Like that's why they have those rules in place. The reason why they have these rules in place is I understand it, mm-hmm. right? But what I'm saying is, is like when you have when you're a manager or a director, right, and you get paid more than me. Right. And I'm training you on the job that you got hired to do. and You don't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. Don't fucking tell me why I took an extra 15 minutes. That's well, what that, it comes yeah, down I mean, to. that's a valid point. Period. That's I don't a give a point. fuck. This is what people don't understand about me. I don't give a fuck about money. Mm-hmm. I don't lead with the thought of money first. I will be fine. Right. I would. Well, I lead with fucking respect. You give me respect, I give you the See, I think respect. she was giving you respect she by did, pulling you did. aside. That's she the did. thing. She did. She did. That's I, the thing. I know she did. <laughs> that's the thing. She did. She did. She did. You and I went to a Celtics game last night. Dude, it, we did. I All right, so let's go end to end on this Celtics game because it was a night. It was a good, it was. It was a great night. I called you up. You, I was like, You Yo, called bro. me. You uh, called me first. I, let's talk about that. Give me a second. I called you. Uh-huh. You, you, there was a voicemail after the second thing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, well, maybe his phone's off. I was or, taking a nap. Or maybe he was whatever, right? Yeah, so then he, so. You sent me a voicemail in the second ring, and then I did question to text you. Because I was like, oh, he, he didn't. Oh, he sent me the voicemail. Oh, he must be busy. Okay. I didn't send you a voicemail uh, for future reference. It just, uh, oh, it just went to a voicemail. Oh, good. Yeah. So I'm glad I texted you. Yeah. Good. See, again, yeah. I was in my feelings. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> right, I understand what you're saying now. I get it. All right. Um, so I was like, hey, man, you want to go to sell this game tonight? You know, boom. And then there was a little wait. Mm-hmm. And then you called me back. And you're like, yeah, man, I'm down to go. And I was like, good. Because I was like, if you said no. Done. P- Cut to the Chase podcast. No longer produced by Beacon Street Studios. Nope. So good, good, good move on your point. Um, and I was like, yeah, man, come. You're like, cool, we'll go. Preseason game, by the way. So we were, they were playing the Toronto Raptors. And I think you were impressed a little bit because I was like, hey, man, I'll pick you up. I was confused. Oh, well. Yeah, I was confused. Well, I, thought, I thought you might have been. All right. No, because it doesn't make sense when we live in the city for you to pick me up to go somewhere that's equidistant. Let's. let's. Uh, right. Um, that's, that's not a that's not a regular word. Latin for Latin for equal distance. How about, um, how about Latin for showing off? How about Latin for ugh? Um, yeah, no, you were like, so I have the text pulled up here. You, you were, you were said, you said, um, I, I, we were speaking and I go, you know what? Let me, let me text you <laughs> because I just woke up from a nap and I need to kind of like think yeah, about yeah. how this is going to work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause you were out like you are always. I'm always in the streets. You're always in the streets. I'm never in the streets. <laughs> I could tell with the way you're fucking. Yeah, if we were in the Marines, cleaning, I would be the guy in the drone building in Utah while you're in Fallujah, like on the ground. Yeah. You're, you're, <laughs> yeah. That's how it will go. Um, you and kind of look like it too with that yeah, setup. Like, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So, so you said, okay, um, uh, I said, I go, 730 tip off time. Are you trying to eat beforehand? If so, because I sent, are you trying to eat beforehand as a message? And then I go, mm mm. Let me, let me add some context to this. I said, if so, let's meet at the garden for 630 and try and grab a table at, you know, whatever, wherever the place was. If not, let's just meet closer to tip off and we'll get something at the game. Cool. Your response, yeah. nah, I'm picking you up. I got an Uber. Let's eat before. What time do you want me to pick you up? After I read that, I was very confused. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I was like, why would he pick me up if we both have access to Uber and we both know where we're going to be and when the game is? See, this is where you overthink shit. I don't think I was. I think you were overthinking the pickup. I was over. Th- no, no. I just offered to pick you up because I was like, hey, man, I, I want to like kind of because, you know, you've been helping me with the podcast and stuff. You've been doing a lot of oh, things. Oh, oh, I get it. And I figured, like, you know, I'll pick you up. You know, you always well, kind the, of offer to do that. So I was like, I'll, I'll, nah, this time I'll do it. Okay, well, that's a nice that's a nice gesture. That was a very nice gesture. The tickets the tickets are enough. We had great tickets. Um, and so, so instead of overthinking, well, I, I said, I can be ready in 30 minutes. And then I go, it might be easier to just meet in front of the garden for, like, 630 
and then hit up one of these places unless you're already in the area. Because in my head I go, it sounds like he wants to ride together to the game. So I'll see where he's at. Because if you were at your house, I'm like, what, the, what, what, what the sense point. does that make? Sure. I would have said no. Right. You said, I'm at MIT. 610? 6 o'clock? 610? Let me know. And I go, you know what? Let's do this. I'm ready. I'm ready for 6 o'clock. This was at like 545. Right. And then, and then the night began. And then this is, this is how the night began. Chase comes, comes and picks me up. He texts me. Mm-hmm. He goes. Great car. He goes, two minutes away. I said, okay, I'll head down. He, he responds, white car, a.k.a. Snow Bunny Mobile. I mean. Couldn't have been more accurate. I get in the car. I mean. I get in the car. Okay. And Chase is having a full-blown conversation with the Brazilian woman. He knows only a couple words of Portuguese. <laughs> but the way that he's saying this made me think for a split second, I go, does Chase fucking know Port? Is Chase fluent in Portuguese? <laughs> I'm like, I know he does this weird shit where he like yeah. pretends to do this or says he does this, and then you know, like, he works for the CIA and all this other stuff and all this other bullshit. Secrets. And I'm That's like, all my secrets. I'm like, maybe he knows Portuguese. You don't know Portuguese, but you knew enough to get this woman going. That's just the thing, though. Sometimes in life, you just need just to know just the, the just the basics. You know you. you I feel like there's so many people that get so much wrapped up. They feel like they need to know oh so much stuff just to get ahead. You, sometimes you just can. Language is interesting. Language is interesting. Like even if you don't know a language, you can still communicate with a person. Sure. Well, this woman did speak some English, so I think that made it easier. Yeah. Either way, yeah. you guys were having a conversation well after I was in the car. Yeah. Uh, and so I sat in silence for a good two blocks. You did. Um, you could have said and, something. Well, here's the thing. I couldn't have contributed to that conversation <laughs> because you guys were talking about Brazilian people that you know. I don't know any Brazilian people, number one. Mm-hmm. I don't speak Portuguese, number two. I follow Portuguese? Yeah, I don't. And I, I just could not have added to that conversation. So I waited mm-hmm. till, till that was... So you, we waited there was a lull. Moment. You waited for your moment. Yeah, there was a lull. Okay. And it was uh, back and forth. And, and you were... This is how I knew it. You were saying things as you were saying the, the words to her where you were like, she doesn't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, she didn't know. Maybe not. Okay, then maybe not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, she has no idea. <laughs> so I was, and there was a pause and I was just like, so my day. So your day. I, go, I started off with, so right. my day. Yeah. So, so, hey, did you guys look at the new ice cream flavor at JP Licks, by the so way? So bizarre. So bizarre. So whatever. So that was nice. So we, so we, we made it to the garden. And uh, we made it. Yeah, we went to um, Tavern in the Square. We went to this place, Tavern in the Square, which is right across from the garden. Yeah. And let me tell you something, man. Like you're a fan. Hey, you you did a great. Well, we we will get into the 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 food critique of the place. Well, because, let's get into it, guys. I would reach out to that place and hey, and sponsor this podcast because their food over there is very good. Man, what do we have, Nick? I mean, so so Tavern in the Square, there's a place in Somerville. That's where I where I went to college, like Cambridge, uh, on the Cambridge Porter Square line. It used to be called Tits. Well, it, I mean, you could, you could still call it Tits. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can. I don't know. But it's a, it's just your, it's a regular sports bar. It's yeah. just a regular kind of early 2000s vibe in their mm-hmm. sports bar. Sure. Uh, but they figured out how to do food pretty well. The yeah. food was really good. I got a salad with blackened salmon, which oh. you critiqued. Ah, yeah, that was yeah. good. Because I was thinking, like, why is this? Why, he's getting a salad. We're at a game. Let's get a little. Let's get a little game food. What I what I didn't tell you is, or maybe I might have, is that I had for lunch two slices of pizza from Halftime Pizza because I was in that area oh, yeah, beforehand. Yeah, you did. And a cookie from Levain Bakery, which is like three regular cookies from first anywhere of all, else. First, of, first of all, Nick, you did tell me that. Yeah, but you left out the cookie part. Yeah. So I wasn't doing great. I hadn't had many nutrients in my system. So I'm like, let me do this so that I don't pass out at this fucking game. Mm-hmm. It was delicious. Good. You got a salad. You got wings. Did Deli- they look delicious? Chili wings, like habanero chili wings. Seemed fine. You didn't. You didn't take a bite though. No, no, no. Those are your thing. That you we we had our plate, but then we got f- fries for the table, which is a must. I think anywhere you go, side of fries, side of fries for the table. Traditional, not curly, just basic. I don't like a lot of shit with fries. Yeah, 
regular fries. I can fuck with all types of fries, but I don't want that one. No, no, no. I mean, if a fry is a fry, make it a fry. Like if it's a crinkle fry, great. If it's a, you know, whatever fry, fine. But I don't like the cinnamon sugar on it. I don't yeah. like poutine, all that other shit. I'm, I'm off. Mm-hmm. It was po- delicious. Say poutine? Poutine. It's fries, bacon, and cheese melted on it. First of all, I love everything that you said about yeah. that. Why didn't we order that? That was they funny. didn't have that there. Oh, you're right. I don't think they had it there, okay. which is shocking. But you, after the food that we were having before the game, you almost lost your shit when they brought the dessert out. Well, so we had a wonderful waiter too. Let's just start there. Ooh. I mean, this guy was just very on top of things. Yes, he was very on top of things. No pun intended. Energetic. Not, not over the much. top, where no. it's like this isn't King Richard's fair. Let's bring it down a little. Yeah, yeah. No, this not, guy was this is not Storyland. Yeah, <laughs> like relax. Santa's Village. <laughs> no, this guy was on top of his shit. I just love the fucking the the. <sighs> Listen, let me say this. I love waiters that know how to do their job. I just like I love servers. I'm not even calling yeah. waiters. I call, servers, servers that know how to take orders. Servers who know how to listen, servers who know how to wait to listen, servers who offer other things on the menu. Mm-hmm. They know the menu. They explain what the menu is about. Yeah. They leave you room to gather your thoughts, come back, but not long enough for you to get aggravated, but long enough for you to be ready for your order to take it. I thought I thought it was a good call going to that place. The fucking dessert was reckless. How would you explain it? Because I can't explain uh, it. It was like French toast sticks, Oof. which is, which is, I don't even know if that's a white person dessert, but like French toast, I never think of because I'm like, first I'm. Of all, that's not a white. That's first of all. Okay. No, it's not. Right? <laughs> no, no. That's, all right. That's, that's. That's something different. Yeah. There's okay. A, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a brother on the executive committee there. There's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a sprinkle of that in there where I was like, yeah, Cinnamon okay. toast, like cinnamon toast crunch sticks with. Vanilla ice cream on top. Fried cinnamon Fried. toast crunch sticks with vanilla ice cream on top. The yeah. more I say this, yeah. the more I'm like, okay, this is, yeah, okay. Yeah. This is not, this is not a yuppie. It's different. Yeah. It's different. It's it was very good. good. I never get dessert it's and good. it was fucking great. I, when he said, do you guys want dessert? And I was like, yes. You were like, oh, fuck, damn it. But then when it came out, I think that went away. Cause I think I, I lost track of time, mm-hmm. but I think you were like, oh, we, you know. Because I think you were kind of like already ready to go. But I was like, nah, man, let's have... I never get dessert because dessert to me is a waste of money. I always think it's such a waste of money to get dessert. Because oh, they just... It's okay. like $15, $20 for a slice of fucking nothing. It's about it, the experience, bro. I don't think dessert's an experience, though. That's the thing. So that being so- said, the fucking dessert that we got last night was an experience. Well, because good thing you switched that up. I would have... I mean... It was good. It was good. Waiter was good. Waiter. He was one of those waiters like I would go back to. I love upbeat gay waiters. I mean, let's just call it what it is. This this guy was upbeat. He was gay. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I assume he had a very affected voice. I, I don't know what you know if he was queer or not, but mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that shouldn't matter. But it does to me. It's just that extra bit of like I know he's on top of it. He did have four buttons like un- unbuttoned. He did, and he had a lot of rings on. He had a lot of different rings on he his had, hand. Like a Colombian vibe. Argentinian. Argentinian, yeah. Very, like, his. he had, like, a certain amount of melanin, but not a lot. Mm-hmm. Enough where he could get a tan in the spring, but not, like, you know, just good. Like, he just had, yeah. a good, like, a good copper. Kind of, like, Spanish-Greek vibe, too. Yes. Like, a little crossover. Mm-hmm. Definitely Armani, like, uh, like Kenneth Cole Black. Like, Armani Black Cologne. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Something very pungent. Yeah. And like without it. a doubt, like you said, could have worked in Miami. Would be making six figures in Miami as oh, a waiter. That guy right no there. No question. That dude, waiters like that, that know exactly how to serve, hospitable, just do their, know how to do it. I do, why, I think this, gay- is, this is the reason why I'm like so, I'm talking about this a lot is because we talk a lot about like the workplace now and the people's personalities now in the workplace. It just was refreshing to see like someone, there's still people out there that care about their job and they yeah. want to do it well. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, and gay men make me feel more comfortable in those environments. Something ab- I, right? It's just something about a gay guy that just knows everything that's happening, and it just puts me at ease in that service <laughs> in that service role where it's like 
we're going to get you your table. We're going to get you your seat on this airline. We're going to get, you know, it's like, yes, you are. You're going to handle all of this. He was great. And I have no, I had no worries that he was going to fuck that order up. I had no worries that, you no. know, no. he was just, he was just the best. Food was on time. There was, we didn't even ask, like, where's the food? The food like came exactly like within like, yeah. like, like 15 minutes, if that, 10 minutes, whatever. Um, it was good food. Good. You, you, you chose us. I've been, I've ate there before, but I don't know why the experience wasn't the same. I don't know why. Maybe I just went to the bar. I didn't have food. Yeah. I feel like I've been there before. He was a great waiter. Hats off to him. What do you think his name was? Diego, you know, you know. Yeah, Diego fits. Diego, Diego fits. I'll go with Diego right now. Maybe he has people call him Dan or Danny. I th- actually, I, I want to take that back. I think he was more of a Camilo. Camilo, you went in the opposite direction. Camilo's Colombian. Yeah, yeah, like Colombian. I got a friend named Camilo. He's he kind of reminds me of a Camilo. They call him Cam. Not Camilo. No, Camilo. Okay. Yeah, All right, Camilo. fair enough. Yeah, I'll, I'll check the receipt and see what it was. So, boom. Um, Yo, we ate. It was good. Um, we we bounced. We went to the Celtics game. Good seats. I like the angle seats. I you got to get seats at an angle. Yeah. I, I never had. I never sat in an angle, you know, like at a yeah. game, you know, where you can see the whole, yeah. you know, the angle of, of the whole court. And pretty much, you guys see, see the whole, everyone around you, you know. Um, which is great. I, I, I think you got to get an angle seat or you got to get a balcony seat, but the first or second row in the balcony. That's where you get the best view of the court. I think, yeah. I, mean, I, think, I, think, those were, I think those were the two seats that I usually get, and the ones that we had last night was like perfectly. Yeah. There were some interesting people at the game, wasn't there? Well, first of all, I fucked up our seats. <sighs> you did. There's nothing worse than going to a game when you're sitting, when you're sitting in your seats. And you have you know two or three people come up and be like, I think we're I think we're in there. So this is what Nikki did. Nikki fucking took he took ownership, you know, because you know of us finding the seats. He, you know, he ended up finding seats um, right we, section area, right general area was general area. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, still wasn't right. You still fucked, right. You still no, fucked up, right. but whatever. Um, so you they got up, we sat down. You realized these they weren't the seats, mm-hmm. and then you, which I do like, you took ownership that they, you fucked up. It's not a major, it, minor infraction. Sure. Minor infraction. I'll tell you what, the women that were sitting in their seats did not think so. Those women looked like they did not stand up and sit down a lot in one day. Well. They did not look like they were creatures of movement. They don't look, they, let's just say, just the based on how they looked, I could tell they don't drink a lot of water or stretch. No. <laughs> no. These were soda drinkers. These, these were... Not these were Pepsi regular drinkers, yeah, no question, no, yep, and they were not thrilled when we were, when we learned that these. But you did the right thing. You apologized in that moment, multiple times, and I apologize aggressively. That's what I do when I know someone's angry at me. I mirror that with an aggressive, in a polite way. It's a good tactic. Yeah, I'm really sorry. Yeah. With just like staring at them in their in their in their, yeah, sugar, yeah. <laughs> Sugar infused eyes. Yeah, they were. They weren't. They weren't pretty happy. We but did the right thing. We find our seats, though. Yeah, we found our seats. We sat down. We had a good time. You know, the Celtics played the Toronto Raptors. A lot of people for a preseason game, which was there was, it was like a yeah. sold out game almost. Like for yeah, a preseason game it was crazy. No one was paying attention. <laughs> Literally, there was people. All, this is the thing about the Boston Celtics that I hate. Right. I listen. I'm a Boston guy. I'm always gonna. I'm grew up in Boston. Boston sports dude. Thick and thin. But they they gotta they gotta someone's gotta hire someone that does a better job of marketing the game better, like during the game, like the, the the entertainment of the game during the game. When I go to other like stadiums, Boston is probably like deep deep last in the list of like how like who creates these like these lists of like entertainment for the game. It's like. Um, they do this thing where it's like they clap their hands like we're back in like 1999 with I Ricky love Martin. all of it. Yes, yeah, but here's the thing. I love all that. I I want to keep well, it. Well, I want to keep it. Looks like I'm going to find another partner old, to go to with. Old world basketball in the sense of there's not a lot of distractions. When you're a good basket, you know why you know why the Atlanta Hawks have a roller coaster brought out at halftime? Because they suck. <laughs> the Sacramento Kings, you know, like they have a concert at halftime because they suck. No, no, no. 
listen, don't get, don't get, you know. No, I get what you're saying. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. But like, I'm not getting. I don't want to get too head. Like, I'm not saying like you need to bring all these extra fucking things to a game. I'm just saying make it a little bit more, more interesting. You know, make it a little bit more entertaining. You know, it just seems as very blah. It's, it was dull. Everyone seemed like they were on fucking antidepressants. It's just, and you can kind of predict when they're gonna do these things. Uh huh. And I don't like that. No, you know, I like, I like shock, shock, little shock, little shock. Get the plates men are back out there. There was no hip hop. There was no hip hop. There was no little funk except the players. There was no yeah. So we're sitting there, and Chase just goes. Now, mind you, you were high. Can I say that? I was. We'll cut that out if I can't say that. I was, you know, I was. I mean, I smoked a little bit out of his. Nothing lettuce. illegal. Nothing illegal. Yeah, yeah. I was coherent. Yeah, but when you when you get that way, you don't you you you, t- you there's like a there's like a two or three second disconnect, and then you know you'll say something. So you were sitting there, and I was like, I was going a mile a minute. I, I couldn't stop talking. I don't know if you remember that, but I just you know, feel you like did, and I, and, I, and for for like a good part of it, I stopped. I stopped listening. Yeah, I was like, okay, because Nick is starts to like talk, yeah. and I'm just like, and I just, I'm like, look at this fucking. There's no, and it's all bad. It was all about basketball. This is why. This is this is when I knew you were fucking one of those guys. This it was one moment when this is when I knew I was like, oh, Nick is one of these guys when he goes to a game. Fucking Nick. One of the Celtics players. It was a play. The Celtics player made a crossover move. Oh. He made a good crossover move. The whole arena was like, ooh. Shook the guy. Shook the guy, which I don't know, Nick. I don't know how much basketball participation in the blacktop arena that you partic- ever participated. I was the guy getting shook, so I know, yeah. Yeah. The way he responded was like an old, like, white Indiana Hoosier coach. Yeah, I knew you were going to go down this road. And you you was like, what? he didn't do anything. Make all the basket. That, all that flashy, the the flashy black basketball play. No. No, Jalen Brown is fundamentally sound as anyone. I was upset because he didn't finish the layup. Finish the job. And then Chase looks over at me and goes, you would be that coach that would pull a superstar out because he yeah. crossed someone over and didn't make the yeah. layup. Yeah, Greg Popovich. I go, too. yeah, I would. Yeah. I'd pull him out. You'd pull him out. Yeah, and then you put him back in the next play. Just to yeah, like, yeah. Just, just so you know, I can do this. <laughs> you fucking were sitting there, and then out of nowhere, you just go, because because it was Gary Trent Jr. Mm. Who listeners, please go Google this man. Um, <laughs> you just go, yeah. man. I fucking hate hood basketball players. <laughs> He's like, I just hate like hood dudes that play basketball. I just and it was so genuine, like because I know you've been to open gyms where it's like, Dude, let's get a good run in, let's play yeah. basketball the way it's supposed to be played. Yeah, in, in a sense of like, let's just like fucking yeah. not manhandle each other, and yeah. you know, I, well, and then like, a, and then like Michael Beasley would walk in, and you'd be like, fuck, nah. Well, let me let, let me clarify. Let, let me just make sure we Shout understand exactly Beasley. what I meant by that. Okay. When I say hood basketball players, like what I meant is hood basketball players that don't actually work on their game and be like they're not good, but they're still good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're skilled. Because Michael Beasley's a baller. Yeah, dude. I I fucking <laughs> let me tell you Michael Beasley's story. So, Michael so, Beasley's so story my name Academy here yeah. in Fitchburg. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like I like I was wearing my BC shit. Yeah. He was at a tournament when he was in high school, senior in high school. I met him when he was a fucking senior in high school. Right? So good. He was like, "Yo, you from BC, yo?" Ever since then, I knew it was like this motherfucker's hood. Yeah. He's like, "Yo, you go two to B- yo's." Yeah. He's like, "Yo, you go to BC too, yo?" I was like, "Oh, that, I knew it." Yeah. Like he's this is he's that guy. Yeah. Ever since he was, you know what I mean? And actually, after listening more of his story, his background kind of makes sense. Yeah. Right. But what I'm saying is. If you're like a hood dude and you portray that and you are that, fucking be good. Because <laughs> it's exactly what it was. Because that's from the street, yeah. bro. Like if you're a hood dude, you have like hood. If you're a hood, you know how many hood dudes like I know that could have made the NBA, like from the hood, like but they're fucking good because you never talk about the ones that are good. That are, they suck. Yeah. You never talk about hood dudes that suck. You yeah. talk about hood dudes that were good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's exact. That's exact. Okay, so so the whole Rucker Park fucking phenomenon was based on that. So you're right. So you're right. So it's like these dudes that come in and you could tell their hood, which is like half of the Toronto Raptors roster. 
<laughs> are these dudes like some dude got subbed in? I don't even remember his name, and it was dead quiet. And you just go, "Oh, I didn't realize that we had Bone Thugs and Harmony checking into the game." Busy Bone was getting busy though. <laughs> there was a dude that looked like Busy Bone, Bone 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 Bone, yeah, Bone Bone. This guy, dude, you know when he came into the game. See, I like that hood dude. You know when he came, as soon as he got into the game, scored a three, a steal on this on the next possession. Died on the floor within fucking a minute. That's the guy I want on my team. Yeah. That's the hood dude that I want. I don't want the hood dude that wears all the fucking headbands, all the tattoos, walks in, you know, just listen to freaking little baby and he thinks like he's going to, you know, score 38 points. He goes in, he gets two turnovers and, uh, you know, like a, in a, in a crates like four fouls. Now you have to sit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it was interesting. It was definitely interesting. It was a very funny comment. Um, yeah. I, just, I was like, I don't I was like, I fucking hate I was like, that's fucking hysterical. But good. then I said to you, just I was good. like. You got to be good if you're a hood dude. Yeah. You got to be good. Yeah, you got to be good. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're like a thug, you, you want people to think you're a thug, you can't, you got to be, you got to lock down defense. You got to be like Patrick Beverly, lock down defense. Marcus Smart. But see, Marcus Smart can do so much more than just, more yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. One other thing I noticed is that the Boston Celtics, as a whole fan base, mm -hmm. only get excited or yeah, only got excited guy. that game. Yeah, only got excited that game when a white dude made a three. <laughs> Big white dudes that shoot the ball yeah. are always going to have a home on the Boston Celtics. No, they're always going to have a home on a team. Period. Yeah. Like, How fucking crazy was that last night when the, when when Sam Hauser made like eight threes? The, the crowd, it sounded like a playoff game. I loved it. I love it. It man. sounded like a playoff game. I love it. And, and you know, the the that's always going to be part of the Boston um, kind of thing. The yeah. fabric. You know, Larry Bird. Um, even a guy like Brian Scalabrini, who was, let me, give, let me just make this very clear. Very good player. Don't ever get that fucking mistaken. <laughs> Brian Scalabrini was a good player. Went to Stanford University. Started at Stanford. Um... No, I'm sorry. Went to USC. I apologize. Played at USC. Great player. You know, he was a journeyman in the NBA. Had, to, but he's a smart player, and he played. Brian Scalabrini fucking can beat probably the average fuck. So what I'm saying is, my point is, when he got into the game and hit threes, Boston went nuts, and he probably played like five minutes a game. Mm. He, he would hit two threes. He's like, you know, now he has a job, and he's the main commentator to Boston Celtics for averaging probably three points a game. It's wild. Sometimes your impact on a game not necessarily means you have to be the guy. That's why energy is important. People don't fucking understand that. Dude. Wild. Yeah. Halftime show. We're going to take a break, guys, at halftime. This is the halftime show, mainly because I have to put my ghee, my jiffy <laughs> ghee in the dryer. We'll be back <laughs> momentarily. Thank you. Halftime show is back, guys. Thank you very much for that brief interlude. Um, I don't think that was an interlude, but a break. I uh, appreciate you guys. I just had to put my, my jujitsu gi in Nikki Neighborhood's dryer. So we're going to go right back into what we were talking about. But yeah, Nikki, um, you know, the just to kind of recap what we were talking about, if you're going to be a hood dude, you got to be good, you know? I always remember guys, like real quickly, hood dudes, Allen Iverson. <laughs> what do you they were like my favorite players growing up. Hood dudes were like, I never got into Larry Bird until... Like like now in my thirties, I never really appreciated that because I was because I was just like Allen, Allen Iverson's it, Tracy McGrady, like dudes that just had like swag, swag, baggy shorts, cool shoe, cool shoes. No, but that's not hood though. That's different. That's just like yeah. That's, that's, that's just like more of like swag doesn't mean hood. Describe a hood player because I think I think I know what a hood player is, but I clearly have not. You know what a hood dude is? Played against as many as you have. This is, a hood, this is what a hood player Please is. Please tell me. A hood player is a dude that has all the natural abilities who grows up in the hood, all the skills, but doesn't, number one, give a fuck. <laughs> okay, I've that, definitely played against yeah. a couple of these dudes, yeah. yeah. They don't care. Where you're like, oh man, if, like someone, if, just, if someone just like... Mm -hmm paid attention to this kid and just gave him a summer of fundamentals it's like yeah they'd be d1 the hood dude player is a dude that comes like he's on kind of the basketball team but the coach always has to call his mom to pick him up right he has to follow him he has to kind of drive him to play yeah like 
the hood dude is like he loves basketball enough to when the minimal times that he shows up, he leaves you remembering who the fuck he is. You're like, that's the hood dude. The hood dude is when a guy comes and doesn't play with basketball sneakers. <laughs> he, he plays in like regular, like he could just, he could just low top, low top, low shits. top Air Force Ones, right? Shirt off and st- <laughs> stop. They always play with a shirt. I've, play, I've played against more the, more of these guys than I do. I just didn't really know how. I just couldn't put my finger on it of like, yeah. is, is he okay? Is this dude all right? Yeah. They usually have a shirt off. Uh-huh. Um, um, no they, gym bag. N- no. Never. Never a gym bag. No, they don't even drink water. Like, they don't even bring water, you know. Um, they usually just show up at the court at, at the same exact time. You, like, you know they're coming. Mm-hmm. At the playground, but you never like go to the house. Like you just know that they're gonna show up. They'll be there. They'll just be there. They're in the they're in the neighborhood. They're in the neighborhood. Yeah. They usually come in from like probably work. Yeah. Home Depot, like whatever. They probably yeah. got like you know taking care yeah. of like their you know kids or like whatever. The hood dude is actually not. It's not someone to make fun of. Like we're not making fun of this character. They are usually ashy. <laughs> Okay, now like we are not, now we are a little bit. No, they're not, they're not like ashy. Like they don't like they don't bring lotion. Like I, there was a dude named Sean like, that played with me. Tell me about Sean, please. Sean six three six four jump out the roof. Lefty could bring the ball up. Yeah. played center, but he was six three because yeah, 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 yeah. In those days, that's what it was a little bit. You know, you're lucky to get like a six eleven guy on a team. Mm-hmm. God for, not not I mean not in our era. No, um, but now they're everywhere. But this Sean fucking would come in lefty. You know, talks like Mike Tyson, like talk that Tiff. Yeah, talk. You know, just very out there, very kind of like just interesting. You couldn't really, oh, you couldn't put a finger on him, but we always had to force him to come play, come to practice. The thing is, he the reason why he couldn't get a lot of playing time because he never came to practice. But when he came to practice, like once or twice a week, it's like he he's dunking on everybody. Yep. But we couldn't give him the ability. We couldn't give him like he wasn't a leader. He wasn't like you know. There's more to the game than just being athletically gifted. Yes, you got to be able to take direction. You got to show up. You your have, mental has to be there. Your mental has yeah. to be there. Those are the talk, dudes I'm talking about, and they're all over the fucking world. And they're and they're and uh, they're not. You could be a hood dude, not from. You could be from New Hampshire. Like I, I remember playing against dudes where I'm just like, this person seems a little, like like. They're not showing up every day. Yeah. When they do show up, they're either in a great mood, yeah. or, or there's or there's like well, the game they're here to escape something. They, they're, well, primary, yeah, you just said it right there. They're usually there to like escape like the shit that is taking the majority of their time. Which if they just invested more time into the game, who knows where they could have been? So it's usually that case. Shout yeah. out to hood dudes hood playing dudes. basketball. That's right. So if you're gonna be a hood dude. Be fucking good. Be good. That's all I'm saying. Be good. Talk, you know, from the guy that's like, you know. And if you're going to be a slow white dude. Oh, shit. I'll shoot to- the fucking ball. <laughs> shoot it. Well, I think that's the only choice you got. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm reinforcing what I think everyone kind of knows to be true. There was a there was a moment in the game, if I can just bring this up. We, we were watching the game. And this is when actually halftime did happen. Where they brought out. During the halftime show. Oh, man. And this perturbed you a little bit. Well, see, so here's the thing. Well, let me set it up. Please do. Thank you. So, the... <laughs> so, they... I know, because you're laughing. You're just like, you're so ready to, like, jump on it. Like, I know you're ready. I need to slow. I need to slow down a little. Go ahead. Because so, this game is like... I, I know this is your, this is your wheelhouse. I know. <laughs> but I'll be short so you can... No, you, no, you no. Please. So, there was... At halftime... What the Celtics decided to do was to bring, you know, little kids out so they can play each other. That's what they did for the halftime show, right? Hey, Celtics, if you want a comedy, holla at me at halftime. Oh, you know, I would have preferred that. What a horrible gig, but go ahead. Right. But <laughs> they brought these kids out to play each other, right? And we're watching the game. These kids must have been no more than 14, 15 years old. I would say anywhere from like 8 to like 13, 14, whatever, yeah. right? I'm looking at him like, oh, these kids is definitely was. I think one team definitely was like the Jerusalem House of Newton versus Temple Temple Shalom. It's Temple Shalom, yeah. Temple Rec League. Yeah. 
And I was just like, okay. But there was one black kid. Now, me and Nick are observing the game because we're our basketball enthusiasts. We know the game. Mm-hmm. You know, we study. The, we watch it from, I think, from a perspective like, oh, we, you know, we watch it very mm-hmm. thoroughly. We just don't watch it from face value. Mm-hmm. The kids are not hitting no shots. And when I meant the kids, I meant. None know, of them. None of them. And they didn't pass, like, the black kid the ball yet. The only one black kid on the whole, like, you know, there's 25 kids. As soon as a black kid got the ball, he, everyone got out, all the kids got out the way, and he fucking dunked it. He flushed it with one hand. (laughs) Drop step, by the way. Yeah. Flushed it. And I looked at you, and what did I say? I forget. I didn't say anything. You didn't say shit. You didn't say shit. Because you and I saw this kid. And we both didn't want to be like, oh, look at the one black kid out there with no. these three. Because they had three teams. They did. On one end of the court as a team, on the other. And it's a, ro- right. it's a roving right. offense. So it was yeah, Newton, played- Newton Shalom versus yeah. Brookline Shalom. Yeah. <laughs> so they were all on the court at the same time. And it was just a sea of these white kind of seemingly Jewish, you know, heads just <laughs> bopping around. We're just, yeah. <laughs> and then this dude, uh, you know, who clearly sticks out. And is physically more mature. You could just tell by the way that he was walking. If this guy approached me the way, and guy, he was probably 15 years old. And he walked like this dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, we didn't want to say this to each other. But then we were just waiting to be like, maybe he's, you know, maybe there's a reason he's on this team. He's not that good. Or like, you know, right. whatever. Metco. Who knows? <laughs> you, you said Metco. And if I had a drink in my mouth, I would have spit it out in front of the person right. in front of me. For people who don't know what Metco is, what is it? Metco is, is uh, it's, it's uh, Metropolis what Transportation, Education Transportation. Right. Basically, kids. One of my best friends growing up in elementary school is Metco. Sean. Shout out to Sean. But mostly kids in the inner city will get bussed out to, you know, nicer suburban, yeah. nicer, more affluent suburban neighborhoods right. so that they can go to, a, you know, a better, a better education, education nicer facilities. Yes. Right. But there's a stigma attached to that. we all know, guys, just to kind of put it out there, you know, lower income areas don't get the same level of funding. Especially in Boston. Thank you. And it's a, and it's a rough, uh, Boston school system is a really rough but then it's amazing how the, dis- the discrepancy when you go outside of Boston, it's some of the best schools in the state. Oh, for sure. Which is fucking insane. For sure. So, <laughs> but there's a stigma because in Boston, you, or in Massachusetts, you're going to play sports. You go to high school, you're going to play sports. Even like the geekiest of geeks, like you they're go gonna to- They're going to try it. They're going to, yeah, you're yeah. going to try Even it. Even when I was in high school, like the ones who weren't like, obviously they weren't athletes- there were kids that were very smart, that were like obviously educationally driven. Like they were more like about the books. But they would play like they would run track. Tennis. Or tennis. They yeah, would yeah. Be active. You try it. Everyone try does it. a sport, yeah. really, in Massachusetts. We're a very sports driven yeah. competitive city or state. Um, but you know. <laughs> so the kid dunked the ball. <laughs> this kid and I looked at This you. kid dunked the ball, but he dunked the ball like a man. Yeah. He dunked the ball, he flushed the ball. And the two of us look at each other. <laughs> then looked back at the court and then the kid tried to key he missed a couple like i mean he's 14 years old he probably couldn't hold on to the ball yeah but this kid i mean we were just like oh my god please so then we started cheering on yeah. we didn't say we didn't want to like yeah. assume a name or yeah. anything like that yeah but when he got the ball every, we were all on the edge of our seats <laughs> yeah. we we're were like, like what is he gonna do what is he gonna do what, what is he gonna do that he probably doesn't even know that he's capable of doing because he's so young well that's how generally players who don't know that they're that good they possess that thing where like they're just kind of freely just doing it and it just comes natural to them you know yeah like you know and I think that comes with not just well, I mean we are talking heavily sports but like I think that also transcends to other things right <laughs> If something like naturally comes to you, you don't even know that you're like just you don't you don't even know you're doing it well. Yeah, you're just kind of like just doing it. It just comes like there was one kid. I swear to God, this is probably one hood. This is the this is one of the hood. The hood like, dude. I don't. One day you'll know. Like you'll you'll. I'll start. I'll start like fucking introducing you to the people I played against, and then they'll, you know. So I played against. I played with this kid in college. His name's Chris Hamlet. From he was he went to Brighton. He's from Brighton High. He played at Brighton, right? <laughs> Chris is one of these dudes, 6'3", point guard, shooting guard. He can guard one through five. Yep. 
you listed his height. When you're describing a hood dude, sorry to interrupt you. When you're describing a hood dude, the height doesn't really matter because it's, no. it's almost like it transcends. It transcends. When you have that hood in you, yeah. it transcends your height. Yeah. Okay, but go yeah. ahead, continue. Yeah, you're right. Like Chris so Hamlin, you're 6'3". 6'3", you know, probably push a 6'4", but more than 6'3". But the thing is, we thought he was all taller because he always walks in campus. He walked on his toes. He always walks on his toes. Chris is known to walk on his toes. That's why he had the most craziest hops. Because his calves, his legs were so just... He was a jumper. Yeah, I'm talking about drop step. Two hands, one leg coming off, doesn't matter. Right? Same idea. Didn't really take the game like really, you know. It came natural to him. I think he had a scholarship to go to Maryland. You know, and I think he could, whatever. Like he just, I think the grades didn't. So he ended up going to my school, whatever. But, man, when I talk about, I mean, he played, he played one-on-one against Troy Bell. We played at a Division three school. We were D2, junior college, and then we had transferred to D3. He played Troy Bell, who was the leading scorer of BC, Boston College, point guard, right? <laughs> I'm like, let's just say it's one of those stories that don't get out. There's a lot it's of... It's kind of like that guy who dunked on LeBron James and yeah. Nike fucking demolished, demolished it down the tape, because yeah. they didn't want him to be... It was that shit. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. There, though, and there's a thousand of those Chris Hamlins out there mm-hmm. that would give proper Division One basketball players the business. Actually, I don't think he played Troy Bell, but he played someone from BC who was very good, who, regardless of who it was. Fair enough. In that but, time, yeah. BC meant something for well, basketball. BC was, they, they, were, they, were the big, they were fucking... Yeah. They went to the Elite Eight. Yeah. There's a couple of those dudes. I played at Leslie. I played my first year at Leslie, and when I say played, I was on the bench. I never touched the floor. But I, but I, wanted, to, I wanted to get a run in. I wanted to be on the team, whatever. Freshman mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. And there were some dudes where it was just like, everything mm-hmm. you're describing, yeah. this kid, I don't want to say this a lot, it's this kid's name Anthony. Mm-hmm. He later, we found out, got arrested for leaving a gun at a bar yeah. and going back because he forgot his cell phone sure. as well. For. Um, and when he got back, the cops were there. Now, I don't know if that story is true, but Maybe. it kind of sounds like it, that it adds up based on this kid. But this kid was mm. just a little bit taller than you. What are you, 5'6", five, 5'7"? Five, uh, five, 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 eight. Eight. Okay. Windmill, mm. easy, on over people. There's a difference, I think, between dunking and then dunking on people. No, no, no. This guy, Chris, was like, he, it's, it's, yes. it's, yeah. So let's just say, like. There's no obstacle in his way that there's, he's not going to be able to. nothing he could have Correct. Yeah. Made range jump shot, defense. Full court press, half court press. He, it's effort, dude. He was so good. He had to de, like he had to kind of lower his game to, so he couldn't take over all the time. Like he had mm. to kind of like take it easy on us. Isn't That's it amazing it how was. those guys can do that? Where they're just like, all right, this is not this is fun for anybody else, and I'm not getting anything out of this. It, it was crazy, and it, he, he and he works for the T now in Boston, chilling, like you know, doing his thing. And he always will be known as like that dude in Boston. Like this, it's Boston is no different than any other like place, city in the in, in the country when it comes to like you know blacktop basketball shit. Yeah, you're always gonna have. Your, I mean, N one was made primarily off dudes from the hood. Yeah, the whole which I'm sure you saw the documentary. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. You know what I mean? It's wild. So, anyways, if you're gonna be hood again, be good. If not, fucking, I don't know. Fucking. <laughs> Still continue to be free. I mean, either way, you're still gonna be fine because you're gonna be a millionaire. You're gonna make more money than me. So shout out to hood basketball players that are good. Yes, sir. Well, it was fun, and then you know the halftime show it was, and that's where we started both looking at it, going like, yeah. yeah, these people are here for the halftime show. They're here for mm-hmm. a three point shot <laughs> by yeah. one of the lanky white mm-hmm. dudes on the Celtics, and then any sort of t shirt giveaway. That's the vibe I got yeah, of the t- fans last night. People love loved the, the t-shirt giveaways. You know what I mean? Good thing that what we did was, so after the game, we decided to leave a little bit before because the Celtics were winning. It was a preseason game. You know, we want, we're we like me and you, I think, are similar. We like to get ahead of the storm. Mm-hmm. You know, so we, we, got, we left, I think, about five minutes left of the fourth quarter. People didn't start leaving yet. So we are like, let's, just, let's get ahead. Let's, dip. let's, let's dip. dip. When we left, though, bro, when we left, bro, <sighs> please tell me you remember the dude. Yeah. That hey, was, boxing. So I was wearing, so I was wearing, I have a boxing um, jacket for my gym, right? It's a boxing jacket. It says boxing, um, master, USA, it's actually a USA Masters boxing uh, jacket, warm up jacket. It's really nice. 
Um, so it gives the illusion when I wear it that I'm a boxer because people, you know, whatever. I mean, I kind of am. I'm doing it, right? but whatever, dude. Shut up. It's also a windbreaker. <laughs> Shut up. It's also a fucking red windbreaker. Well. <laughs> Which is like one of those things when you see someone in what you were wearing last night, I wouldn't approach someone that was rocking the windbreaker First with a boxing thing on the back. It's like, let's just... If you're going to fake something, doesn't always start with the windbreaker suit? Yeah, the, the merch, yes. Okay, I'm just following... You look like a serious guy. <laughs> you looked like a more serious guy than you are. And, and, and that's what I was looking at. I'm like, all right. Because I always think in the back of my head, like, what happens if we get tested tonight? <laughs> because it's Boston and you have to think that way. You have to. You have to be what prepared. Tested? What do you mean? Tested. Just oh, like, tested, you know, like some bullshit some where it's bullshit, like drug yeah, yeah. dudes or whatever. Because that yeah. area of Boston just sucks. It's this. It sucks. So the dude, so I was walking with Nick. Nick goes, ends up, well, so we walking out of, you know, walking from our leaving seats. Leaving our seats. Leaving our seats. We're about to leave the arena. You know, Nick's wanted to use the restroom real quick. But anyway, so as we're leaving, I hear someone, some dude saying, a boxing. Oh, but did you hear what he said before that? No. He was talking to the ushers, and the ushers said, because he was dressed like a moron. He had slides. Okay. He had, I think, NBA themed socks. Not a team, but like it like was like the NBA. Right. And then he had Celtic shorts on with a with a just a Nets jersey. Not a player. It just it was a Nets jersey. Okay. And then a jacket on. Oh shit. He said to the guys that were there, because they said, hey, why do you have a Nets thing on if you're Mr. Boston? Because this guy is from Boston, you can tell just by listening to him. And he's like, I'm, like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm part Russian, meaning, oh, I like the owners of the Nets, which is such an odd thing to be like. Gotcha. It's so bizarre. Gotcha. So then he then said, I'm the white Boston Spike Lee. <laughs> oh, he no. needs some milk. Nick. Nick. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. I'm so glad you didn't hear that. I'm gonna be honest, Nick. First of all, I fucking love this guy now more. <laughs> now, you- if you told me that before, dude, I would have set up this whole premise a little differently. I did not know he said that. I did not know he said that. Yeah, dude. He said he was the white Russian Spike. He's Lee. the white Spike Lee, in, but in Boston. <laughs> He was tr- he was trying to compare himself to one of the more influential, probably one of the most influential film directors in black culture, black cinema, but in cinema in general, uh, and an iconic Knicks fan. You don't think I think of the Knicks and then I think of Spike Lee. I don't think of a player first. I think of Spike Lee first. Sure. So he was comparing himself. Right. He's, he- but in Boston. Fucking love him. And I literally just walked by. Now, now mind you, he was double fisting Coors Lights. So so, so the, we walk out. So, the, so we walk out. That's fucking amazing. I did not know he said that. Wow. Actually, I want to go find this guy on Instagram. So we're walking out, and the guy, the same guy Nick's talking about, his, and I'm wearing my boxing jacket. He goes, boxing. I heard, I heard him, though, Nick. He doesn't know I heard him. But you know me, man. I keep it moving. Sure. Because I'm, I'm one of those, like, okay, eventually they're going to say, nah, he's not, he's, he doesn't want no. Because if you're from the city, if you, you grew up in the city, that's what you, that's the type of, yeah. like, thing you grew up with. Oh, the guys. Hey, red hat. Hey, red hat. Hey, black shoes. You yeah. Know? Um, which actually, which makes more sense that he is. I do believe he is the white Spike Lee because only black people do that shit. That was. We only, we don't, <laughs> listen. I just saw this from a comedian that said this the other day. Black people, when we call you, we call you by the name of what you're wearing. Yeah. We don't call you by the name. If you're wearing a black hat or some red shoes, we'd be like, oh, even if it's, if it's a sign of endearment or some shit, or if we're cracking on you, yeah. like, yo, red shoes. What's, oh, yeah, red shoes. What's popping red shoes? Yeah, Urkel. Hey, Urkel. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah for you know sure. Like, oh, you know, we always. It sounds a little different with the Boston accent. Yeah, it sounds a little different. Hey, boxing. Yeah, it was I'm like, like, oh, here we go. So Nick, I see Nick's face, like, oh, here we go. And I'm like, and then he said it like three or four times now because now other people are like looking at me now. Uh, now I have to address it, right? I, I didn't have to. I probably could have stepped walking. Probably could have, yeah. But you know me. 
I'm not gonna. You just like to see it burn. I like to just see <laughs> what's just what, what what can we get from this, right? So I'm like, hey man, my name's not Boxing, it's Abel. And then he goes, he he he, he throws his hands up with a coarse light. He goes, hey man, I'm just saying hello, bro. Yeah, my bad. Why? I'm like, what's going on? In my on? head, I'm like, why? Why are you saying hello? And then he goes, let me ask you a question, which never leads to one question. Anytime, guys, don't talk to strangers. No. Because anytime they ask you one question, it leads to five or seven different stupid ones. Okay? He goes, let me ask you a question. I go, what? He goes, name me your top five best boxes of all time. That's never all. good. I'm like, this guy. Especially looks- in Boston. Like, Dude, never. You- don't ever answer a top five related question. So I gave him my top five fucking boxers. I said, Muhammad Ali. No, he said three. I apologize. Not five. He said three. I said, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, and Marvin Hagler. When I said Marvin Hagler, he turns to me and he says, not Roy? Really, bro? Not Roy Jones Jr.? He had two more, I thought. Should no, I said, no, initially I thought he said five, but he asked oh. me for three. Oh. So he's, he's, he actually asked me for three. And I go, yeah, Roy's good, but... You know who Marvin Hagler is, dude? Like, yeah. Marvin Hagler fought Marvelous the Marvin. best of the best. Yeah. Marvin, Marvelous Marvin Hagler from Brock the Mass, Boston Mate. Like, it is what it is. Like, And he's trying to argue with me. I'm like, dude, I don't know how much Molly you're on because he was sweating. He was. He was on. He wasn't. It wasn't just the beers were like to, to lubricate the, the other hard drugs that he had in his system. Yeah. And then, so I'm talking with him. You went to the bathroom. You left me, by the way, because you're like, I time out because I was in the bathroom thinking about this. He had two beers in his hand, so I go, his hands are occupied. I'll take Chase. Uh, if I had to bet between Chase and this guy in a fist fight, yeah, yeah. I'll take Chase any day of the week, especially since this guy has two fucking drinks in his hand. Oh, yeah, yeah. Had his hands been free. Different ball game? Different ball game. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so you look at I what- clocked the situation, too, because he was in slides. <laughs> And you've been doing jujitsu, and I'm like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go wash my Chase hands. Chase is gonna, I'm gonna come out, and Chase is gonna have this guy in a rear naked choke, yeah. ground and pound. Nick's like, oh, I think Chase got this. I'm gonna go wash my hands right now. <laughs> I said to you, I go, I'm gonna go use the bathroom. Fuck him. And this guy's like, no, dude. Roy Jones Jr. is my uncle guy. And I'm like, first of all, there's no fucking way that he's your uncle. Right, right. He did say that. He did say that. He said that, but he said it like he 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 made sure that when you say, listen, I say a lot of things that are not true, but I'm. <laughs> but a lot of things I say are true, right? Sure. So sure. Sometimes I embellish the truth. Sometimes uh-huh. a little, it's satirical. Yeah. I try to do what it is. It's comedy podcast. Comedy podcast. This guy is dead up like he's serious. Like he looked at me like no he's yeah. like this he's my uncle dude and then he looks at me he goes man you got to come on the podcast and talk about this I'm like dude what, in what world do you think I'm ever going to talk to you again my dude no. in what world I could only imagine what this guy's apartment looks like probably better than mine the one I live in at least <sighs> yeah but like I don't know man so I so I went to the bathroom and I came out and they were still talking and I was just like let's go the one thing the one thing you need to know about me is like. I'm all for a good time. I'm all for having fun. I'm all for talking to strangers. I love a good, I love small talk. Love it. I lead very polite, very, uh, I like to, I'm an active listener. This guy was was not the person that you would, (laughs) this guy was like, he would have invited us back to his apartment to do drugs and and done all the drugs. And then we would have been like, why are we here? He's the guy that when he you, he invites himself over for dinner and steals your silverware. Yeah. <laughs> and never leaves. But somehow you can't find the silverware and it's not on him. It's not. <laughs> so we leave. Great game, by the way. A night full of interesting experiences. For sure. Um, and we left the arena. We, we, you know, we set our piece, went our way. And and now we're here now talking about it. So, uh, man, guys, I don't know. It was guys. a good time. It was a good time. Sometimes you just got to get out and do things spontaneously and make a night out of it and get some experience from it. I could tell you, I could tell you right now, Nick, you'll never forget that dude. Well, you know what, dude? This is why I like. Or maybe you want to. Maybe you do. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I have a couple of those dudes in my family, so I'm kind of just like I don't need to. I don't need to hang out with that guy. You know, I hope he got home safe. I wish him well. I wish him well. Cut to the Chase podcast, guys. Abel, Chase Abel, 
Um, hopefully, you guys enjoy this episode. I think it's time for us to leave. I don't know. You got some more? Because I'm, I'm like, good. Yeah. Ooh, that was. Ooh. I mean, what a way to like leave an episode. Please follow this podcast, guys. Again, cut to the chase with the number two. We're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. We're everywhere where podcasts are available. Brought to you by Beacon Hill Studios. Nick, what do you got? Uh, nothing. Just follow us online. You know that. You know the socials. <laughs> Nick has. Nick has. Is, is, is I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have told that strip club story. Yeah, I was about to I was about to say what a what the fuck kind of story is this? I was gonna say, we're gonna edit that out. I was like, Ugh. I'm editing that strip club story out, and the fans are gonna hear us say this now and go, what was the strip club story? Yeah, I was like, I was it got so a point I started eating a tangerine. Yeah. I, like, <laughs> I just started listening to the story. I'm like, oh, let me just eat this tangerine. Cut to the Chase podcast. Go follow Chase on all socials. Like, follow, subscribe. Thank you. We out, guys. Appreciate you. Peace.